I think it's just dandy. But it'll be even dandier tomorrow morning when the azalea is delivered. Azalea? I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear that. Okay. But hear this. Goodbye. Mrs. Lawrence, I can devote my whole day to this place. And by evening, it'll be transported. Mrs. Maitland will be ecstatic. And you'll be able to hold your head up proudly. Goodbye, Mr. Edmund. You're being very difficult, Mrs. Lawrence. This is just the beginning. Oh. Come on, Mrs. Lawrence, give me a break. Mrs. Maitland's going to pitch a fit. And she pays great. Okay. But only if you use what I ordered from the nursery. Azaleas. <sighs> a much maligned flower, I always say. Happy days, Jeff. <sighs> Whoopee. Well, tell me, what exactly do you want me to do tomorrow? I don't care to err. Well, nothing too complicated. Just stay real close to me so I don't faint. Oh, and at the appropriate moment, you will pass me the ring, which I have brought. <laughs> the absent-minded groom already. No, 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 I got it. Hey, calm down. Was it in her box? No, it was in a little manila envelope. You know, bulky. It's gone. You're sure? I thought I heard something drop and I took my car keys out. Oh. <laughs> oh, you think it's funny? Maybe you better be the one to tell Nancy. No, thank you. Do you think Freud was right? What? There are no accidents. The unconscious. Listen, don't start analyzing me, please. I just got a belly full of that from your sister. <sighs> Look, Jeff, if you'd just like to talk friend to friend. Okay. Just eat. Looking for something? Part of the ritual of a wedding. Looks like we're all out. Oh, here we are. Rice. That's for our good luck. Mm. It's gonna be great, isn't it? I hope so, Tizzy Lish. Here comes the bride. All dressed in hives. Hives? Oh. Where? Oh, don't ask. You know, I haven't had them for years, but they really seem to be making up for lost time. Well, you can't be nervous. I mean, it's not like you're in for any surprises or anything. Buddy, you have an amazing knack for getting right to the point. It's just uncanny. Hey, one little grumpy sister, now a big grumpy sister. Excuse me. Oops. Why is Annie grumpy? I didn't know she was. Why are you? Oh, I'm not. I told you I, uh, I itch. Tea? No, thanks. Oh, come on. It's no fun drinking alone. Um, if you and Jeff don't have anything on, why don't you come over for dinner? Just the family. Well, actually, Jeff and I decided to honor the proprieties and not see each other till the big event. Besides, we had a fight. Your father and I had a whopper the night before our wedding. Par for the course. Oh, so it seems. No tea? Uh, I really can't sit still. I'm going to be a very tough act to follow tomorrow. Here's your book. Thanks. Oh, I meant for you to keep it. That's okay. No, it's a natural progression. When I remember that it was Nancy who gave it to me, I thought it'd be nice if you had it next. I think it's kind of neat. One book that belongs to three decades of Lawrence women. That's a nice idea.
Uh, yes, Jeff Maitland, please. Doris, can you hang on half a second? Mr. Maitland's office. Hi, Louise. It's Nancy Maitland. Oh. Hi, Mrs. Maitland. He isn't here. Oh, uh, well, when he gets in, could you tell him I call, please? Uh, tell him it's important. It's uh, about dinner with my folks tonight. He won't be back today. Uh, would well, you know where I can reach him? No, I'm sorry. When he left, he... Louise, what's wrong? Well, I don't know exactly, Mrs. Maitland, but he had a god-awful row with his father. They were really going at it. I tried not to listen, but he could hear it all over. You heard it? Yes. But I really don't think I should... No, no, of course. Uh... Oh. Well, anyway, he came storming back in here and said he was going, and he did. I'm sorry. I don't know where. I'd say if I did. No, no, that, that's okay. Thank you. Got a minute? Got a minute? Uh, I want you to have this for tomorrow. It's the, uh, it's the something old part. Over it. That's my mother's. She wore it at her wedding. Oh, Daddy, it's lovely. I meant to give it to you the last time, but, uh... In case I haven't mentioned it, I'm very happy for you and Jeff. I want everything to be wonderful for you. And I think it will be this time. I know I've had my doubts about Jeff, but that's all over. And I love you very much. Thank you, Daddy. Now, before you see how maudlin and uh, sentimental I can get, I'll be the Haiti retreat. cups are here on the bottom, and the cake is a masterpiece. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and don't worry. I'll be able to finish all the food by tomorrow. I'm counting on you. Oh. Jeff and I had lunch today. Did you? How is he? He's very nervous and very edgy. I think he's a little crazed. Don't tell Nancy this, but he lost her wedding ring. How could he lose it? Just like that, it seems. Well, it's not so strange. People get nervous. They eat. They lose things. Nancy's got hives. Kidding. You think everything's all right between them? Oh, absolutely. Are you sure? Definitely. And why are you eating that cookie like there's no tomorrow? I'm not. Neither am I. Hello, nice swan. Hi. Where are you off to? Rehearsal, remember? Betty Costigan's mother said she'd pick me up. Kate said she'd collect me later. All right. Oh, just a second. I'm waiting to hear. Hear? Mom says dinner's ready, so you better come and get a plate. It's a buffet. Uh, have you decided about your name? Uh, no. Uh, well, I hope it's yes. I mean, Annie Cooper Lawrence sounds very good to me. Well, actually, I have decided against it. It was a dumb idea. Well, that's odd. Buddy, did she talk to you about changing her name? I mean, she seemed so pleased. She wanted to tell everyone about it, see how they felt. I can't imagine what, uh... What? I'm what? Me. Buddy Lawrence, the turkey. Yeah, she did talk to me. I told her it was a dumb idea. Well, I also told her that adding Lawrence wasn't changing anything. It was just adding something. And now she's been weird with me ever since. 
I had the same discussion with Nancy about being Lawrence Maitland, or just plain Maitland. He was kind of dumb. Well, maybe it is for Nancy, but that's her business. It's very different with Annie. I think maybe she was trying to tell you she finally feels she belongs here. She was afraid you didn't want her to use our name. I guess I blew it. I guess you did. You are a child at heart. Oh, I was cleaning up. Aren't you surprised to see me? Yes, I am, very. I mean, I, I know we decided not to see each other tonight, but I realize that's a stupid idea. I'm glad I decided that, too. Actually, I, I called your office and they told me that you had left for the day. Indeed, I had. Mother invited us to dinner. Oh, it's too late for dinner. But talk, sing, dance. Whatever your heart desires, it's time to rejoice. Oh, Jeff, you're crazy. <laughs> no, I'm not crazy. I'm free. And it feels so good. I'm free as a bird, happy as a lark, and peaceful as a dove. And so would you be if you had just spent your last day debating the merits of tinted glass versus untinted. Tell me what you mean. I have joined the ranks of the unemployed. I quit. I told my father to take his rearview mirrors and shove Maitland puts your future behind you. He did what? I, of course, I don't think we can count on Dad showing up here tomorrow. But Mom will be here. God forbid she should miss a party. Jeff, call your father and apologize. Wait, tell, him, tell him he changed your mind. Tell him you'll talk to him tomorrow. Of all times to pull a stunt like this. Hey, Nancy, calm down. It's just the perfect time to do it. Oh, don't say it. Say what? We're starting over, Nancy. Clean slate. <laughs> I have to say it. That's why I did it. It... It sounds to me like you just want to go back to square one again, start drifting through the days, dreaming up new games for us to play. Well, from what I can see around here, games are right up your alley. Will you fix it now, please? Hey, Nancy, are you worried about the money? <laughs> There's lots, you know that. I mean, we can go on exactly the way we'd planned. It is not the money. What I had planned was, was two adults leaving an ordered, structured, real kind of life. Well, then what's the argument? That's my plan, too. If it were your plan, then you would have told me about it first. Quitting a job is a major decision. And it's the kind of decision that, that a married couple should decide together. Well, all right, all right. I, I understand what you're trying to say, but I had to do it when I did it, that's all. Come on, Nancy, let's stop this. You stop it. You stop it now or... Or what? Annie's rehearsal will probably be over by the time I get there. Well, drive carefully. Well, maybe she got a lift home. Special delivery for Lawrence? Oh, that's us. Thank you. Well, your guess is as good as mine. I wonder, I wonder. Darling Kate, it was wonderful of you to allow me to participate in the wedding. This is just to say thank you. Sylvia. I see it, but I don't believe it. No afternoon wedding is complete without one. S. <laughs> oh, my saint of that. <laughs> so she wanted to participate. Take it away and put it out of its misery. <laughs> Nancy, 
Nancy? Mother. What is it? Where's Timmy? Oh, he's at home asleep. Jeff's with him. Is he? Yeah, he came over. You better get in. I have to pick up Annie at rehearsal. Oh, well, maybe better walk home. Absolutely not. Don't worry. I won't be able to nag you in the middle of Swan Lake. up there being a swan. Right now, I'd rather be Annie more than anybody else in the world. Not really. Oh, really? Then if I could, I'd help you to do that. But there's not a way. So it seems. Do you think Jeff and I decided to get married again for the right reasons? Don't you? No. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, when I was a kid, one of the best things about being in a play here or, or dancing here was, was knowing that you and Daddy were sitting up front, watching me, trying not to laugh. Being very pleased with me. And you want that for Timmy? Yes. I've seen what happens to children who don't have fathers. I think I want it for me, too. I've seen mothers without husbands. Maybe that's why I did it. I'm so confused. Why not? Every woman is on the eve of a marriage. Even on the eve of a second? I think you have to put aside these fears, Nancy. But if what you're feeling isn't ordinary doubt, ordinary insecurity, then... Then what? That's your mom. for bed. One mother of the bride getting ready for? It's past asking. Just keep your fingers crossed. Nancy? Something's wrong. Do you know what it is? No. Trouble is, I don't think Nancy knows either. Can we help? Not this time. I'm sorry to say.
tired. Emmy Sheldon stepped on my feet every time she turned around. That's okay. I just wanted to come in here and say something. I'm a person who doesn't respond to change very well. It takes time for me to get used to things. Like when Willie got married, I was a wreck. And now it's Dancy. And then there's me. No, you're fine. From the day I met you, I wanted you to be my sister. And I thought everything was settled for you, too. That's why it's so important to me that you have this book. But if you're not ready, well, that's okay. Do you understand? I understand. I hope so. my turn to need a walk. We just had a fight. I wouldn't be surprised if we had two or three more. I, I want to talk to you. I just want to know that every time we disagree about something, one of us doesn't go flying out the door. It won't happen again. There's something I need to say. I, I want to be married to you more than anything I've ever wanted. But it won't work. Oh, Nancy, it was a fight. Please. It will work. Listen, I have plans for us that I haven't even had time to tell you about yet. Two weeks ago, I met a group of musicians who are the most talented people I have ever met, and they live in Hawaii. Oh, Jeff. Listen to me. They want me to be their manager. Now, that is something I could do so easily and so well. And we would be living in Hawaii. Timmy would go crazy. It's off. Tomorrow's off. Why? Just stop and think about something for a minute. Think about when things are really good between us. Think about when you feel good with Timmy. When we have a terrific time in bed. Think about when you love me most. Now. Always. Not always. Things are best when we're not married. When we are, it's not good, hardly any of it. And now that the closer and closer we actually get to being married, the rougher things get between us. I love you, Jeff. You're a, a charming, romantic, wonderful, wonderful flake. But you're not good at being married. I, I think you get cornered and scared. I, I can't go through that again. I can't pay the price for those feelings again. Oh, Nancy. You know, for the past couple of days, you've been trying in your own way to, to tell me how you feel. I, I finally heard you. The first time you told me with women. But this time, you bought a boat, and you, you walk out on your job, and now it's some crazy idea about the music business. Now, wait a minute. I want you to stop and think about a couple of things. You know, there are different ways to be married. Not everybody has to live a nine-to-five life. I mean, that was the mistake we made the first time. Just because that's the kind of marriage that your mother and father have, it doesn't mean you have to buy it. Well, I do buy it. I, I want to be a, a regular, responsible person. I like knowing I'm going to be a lawyer soon, and I want Timmy to grow up in one piece. Well, he's going to go right on doing that. Maybe. I, I can't take the chance. And I'll be damned if I'm going to give up those few steps forward I've made just to play Wendy to your Peter Pan again. No matter how much I want you. Just like that. Okay. I thought you'd changed. <laughs> and you thought I had. Both wrong, huh?
I did want to give it a try, though. And I wouldn't have hurt you this time. At least that much has changed. I know. I'm so very sorry. We could have had fun. Oh, yes. Nancy. Oh, no. for your patience, your understanding, and your love. You are such a good group. Annie Cooper Lawrence seconds that. I'll drink to that. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Kate, didn't you call her? I called everyone else. I assumed that Jeff would tell her. Excuse me, I have to make a phone call. Me too. Don't you dare. No, Nancy, this one's on me. Sylvia? Sylvia, I bet you're wondering why I'm not wearing the hat. You're right, no afternoon wedding is complete without one. However... You're a trained dietitian, and your hobbies are macrame, jogging, and baton twirling. If you'd like, I could appear on the show in my costume. It's really boss. I'm sure. Uh, any other interests? Sharing. Sharing. You know, sharing my feelings with a groovy person who wants to share theirs. Well, you keep up the good work. <laughs> now, if you'll just go down the hall to Mr. Preminger's office, he'll... Should I write that down? No, it's okay. <laughs> All right. He'll photograph you, and then someone will be in touch with you if you're going to be on the show. Oh, <laughs> gee, thanks. <laughs> hey. Slaving away, I see. Oh, it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah. Mm. How come you're here? I was visiting Dr. Agony after school today. Dr. Agony? The dentist. His office is right near here. Oh. I do have to ask you one little favor, though. I'm going to be at Audrey's tonight. And if you could, would you pick me up at 9.30, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Willie. Mom and Dad are going out with the fibers, and no one's going to be able to bring me home, please. I'm afraid you're going to have to take a cab, buddy. Tonight, I've got my writing workshop. Believe me, after a day like today, I need something to remind me I'm a writer. OK, I'll just stay at Audrey's and wait for you. Her Aunt Joanne's going to be there. Uh-uh. In that case, absolutely not. Oh, come on, Willie. You'd like Joanne. She just moved here. All right, if you must know, there's someone in my class that I'd like to get to know. Oh. Aside from the fact that she is absolutely gorgeous, and I'm almost certain she doesn't twirl a baton, she's a writer. At least she wants to be one. 
And I really need to be with someone that I can talk with about writing. You understand that? Yeah. Good luck. But if you do change your mind. Yes. <laughs> oh, you send her in. Well, either stick around and meet Bambi Deering or hit the road. Bambi Deering? Guess it's not as easy as it looks. Ta ta. something the other night about Proust. His substitution of detail for dialogue and remembrance of things past. It was very original. I was impressed. Thank you. My name is Willie Lawrence. Susan Madison. I'd like very much to talk to you about uh, Proust, that is. If you're free after class. I'm not. Settle down. You paid for seven sessions with a famous writer. As you may have gathered, I am from the school which believes that although writing may be learned, it cannot be taught, especially in a seven session crash course. In addition to which, I have a bear of a hangover and a chili dog with onions stowed beneath my sternum. Madison, you're up. Madison, if you have nothing to read, the least you could do is model your Halston blazer for us. Anyone knowing Emily Ellis could tell from the current contents of her refrigerator that she was in a state of acute depression. Crammed with frozen Chinese food, egg roll, chow mein, chop suey, cartons of wonton soup, its interior represented the only food in her apartment. And since she was violently allergic to Chinese food, she was obviously trying to commit suicide by starvation. That's it? You said 50 words or less. That was more. Comments, please. Mr. Lemon. I feel that the whole thing just doesn't make sense. Besides, depression is a serious thing, and what Miss Madison wrote makes a joke about it. Now, if I was going to write about a depressed girl... When you do, we'll be glad to listen. Anyone else? Really good. It's stylish, the images are sharp, you know immediately who the girl is and you care about her. Well, I guess you have a fan, Miss Madison. Mr. Lawrence is right. If it's part of a book you've been hiding under your blankets and writing, bring me a chapter. If it isn't, it should be. Moving on, what about you, Mr. Lemon? Would you like to see how the shoe feels when it's on the other foot? No one likes to glimpse a clown without his funny face, especially when he cries. True tears coursing down the true visage are more than most can bear. Put back the battered hat. Put back the false face. And what do you find? A man whose costume is no different than our own. But the notion of the common man is a convenient legal fiction. Therefore, the court held in Viner versus Kurtz that although the plaintiff may... Hey, you're falling asleep. Untrue. I was contemplating your toes. Your lovely, tiny toes. Gilbert, just... Uh, read on, uh, Justice uh, Lawrence. Uh, the plaintiff may be deemed responsible for damages resulting... <laughs> I'm not ticklish. I am not ticklish! <laughs> 
such extenuating circumstances as sleeping children, the court held that propriety must rule. Thank you. The age of chivalry is not dead. But we will be if we don't get this brief finished. You know, we still have a hundred pages to go. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had it for tonight. For the next session, I'd like you all to prepare a piece based on a specific childhood memory. Uh, let's make it a Christmas memory, 500 words, please. A Christmas memory, 500 words. Tell me, which is harder to take, hearing your work praised or hearing it stinks? I think you should know the answer to that. Oh, I do, but it's a test question, and a lot depends on your answer. Oh? Like my future with you. Oh, wait, please. No, I was just trying to be funny. I know. It's much harder to hear you were praised. I may never write another word. I know the feeling. Oh, listen, are you sure you're not free? We could have some coffee. I promise we'll only talk about Proust. Well, there's a problem. You see, I, I don't have my car. I'll drive you home. Please. Well, there's another problem. Oh, never mind. Let's go. I was about to ask you the same question. Well, Gilbert and I were burning the midnight oil. Oh, I see. No, I don't think you do see. Oh, Nancy, I'm not about to give you a lecture on your moral conduct. But you have a three-year-old son living there with you. what goes on at my house. But it just so happens that nothing was going on. Gilbert and I worked round the clock on a property case. Come on. Oh, I'm so tired of living in a fishbowl. Nancy, wait now. You're getting carried away. Yeah, well, maybe I am, but so what? I mean, I'm 27 years old. I I've got a life of my own to live. I have my own family. Nancy, You've got no... I don't think the whole neighborhood is interested in your problems. I'm so sick of this neighborhood. Nobody's forcing you to live here. Well, then maybe no one will mind if I leave. I think tomorrow, would you put aside the real estate section for me? I think it's about time I found a place of my own. We'll save the whole paper for you, darling. It'll wrap up your china. Storms? Well, Willie's had his eye on the guest house for a long time. He'd probably jump at the chance to move in out there. What do you think? I didn't expect this. What? This street is like the one I live on. Saddled, sedate? Old houses with big kitchens that always have hot coffee on the stove. Oh, no. First of all, you must have had a gallon of coffee already. And second, I should have been home hours ago. This is good night, Willie. Really. OK, OK, it is late. My mistake. No. It was my mistake. That little problem I told you about earlier, it was a euphemism. For what? For husband. I miss Susan Madison, will you? A settled, sedate, 
married lady. Uh, Susan? This is Susan Madison? Damn. Stomach's not in such terrific shape. What's your excuse? I'm just not hungry, that's all. You never are after a set two with one of us. What do you mean, Nancy? Mom says she's moving out. Oh, your mother tends to jump to conclusions. I'm sure that Nancy has calmed down by now. Morning. Morning. How'd you make out with the woman in your class, Willie? Bombs away, huh? You go too far, buddy. Well, there's always Aunt Joanne. Forget it. Boy, I sure hope things start looking up. For both of you. She does go too far. Dad, if you were me, then you met Susan. Sensational Susan. Beautiful. Talented writer. I'd be at the florist, sending her roses. Even if sensational Susan were married? I'd forget the whole thing. Well, here's one. Super Duke Jackapoo Sing Only. Uh, Super Duplex Jacuzzi Pool. Uh, that's not good, though. Uh, they don't allow children. What else? Well, let me see. Oh, here's one. Trooper, Utilink, Spanrin, Furpluck. Um, two bedroom, utilities included, renovated Spanish building, fireplace. Where is it? 1515 Constant. Showing only in the AM. What time do you be at school? Never. If I bring a note from my mother. Or my big sister. That southern exposure keeps the room absolutely sun buttered all day long. Sounds a little messy to me. I think it's wonderful. And this room is just superb. I know, I know. I take it myself, but then what about Rupert, Harold, and Simon? Oh, no, be tight squeeze for three children. Children, no, my dear, they're Bassets. Stairs are a nightmare for them when they're young, but at 15, no, I couldn't subject them to that. Bassett stairs? Oh, I, I see what you mean. Uh, Mrs. Maitland, I don't want to pressure you unduly, but uh, if you like it, I'd grab it. Places like this, they go like hotcakes. Oh, I, I should... We'll take it. I beg your pardon? I'm her business manager. I uh, will take it. Well, you'll be glad you did. Uh, now, about the deposit? Do you take credit cards? I'll write your check. Lunch. Be back in an hour. Oh, Hi, I'm interested in being a contestant. Mm -hmm. You told me where you worked, so I thought that I'd come over and... I, I just wanted to apologize for last night. Well, I must say, there are some things that aren't clear to me. I don't know where to start. Well, how about here? I know why I tried to kiss you last night, but what did you have in mind? Nothing. Oh. Mm. I mean... Well, in the future, may I suggest that you tell the guys you go to coffee with about your husband beforehand? It's not like that. Willie, I've been married for six years. Yeah, I know, and you love your husband very much, and you also love playing games, too. Are you Mr. Lawrence? Oh, he's out to lunch. I can wait. Uh, you, you, you can, you can, uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, that wasn't fair of me. It wasn't fair of me, either. Uh, it wasn't, but let's just forget about that. Friends? friends. Listen, why don't we have lunch? We have more to talk about. Okay. How about tomorrow? Well, I... I'll give you a call later All on right. this afternoon. All right. Yes, I understand. Okay. Uh, goodbye. Bye. 
fine. Ah, oh, half day today? The joys of a small law firm. The joys of a large family. Nancy's not home. She's been apartment hunting all day. Ah. Uh. Doug, there's nothing wrong with her finding a place of her own. Oh, I know that. I just don't want her to leave for the wrong reasons. I mean, she had a tantrum, and now she feels obliged to see it through, whether she wants to or not. Suppose she wants to. Kate, she has a house right back there. She pays no rent. It's an ideal situation. For whom? Well, I'm going to talk to her when she gets back. Better have a listen to. I suppose you think I'm being foolish. Not foolish, fatherly. And wrong. My loyal wife. If you wanted compliance, you should have married a St. Bernard. Sometimes if you say it out loud to someone. Oh, no. Bad idea. Try it. In secret we met. In silence I grieve. If thy heart could forget, and thy spirit deceive. If I should meet thee after long years, how should I greet thee? silence and tears. I'm sorry. I don't want to be just friends. Excuse me, I'm... No. I want to say something to you, but... don't just... don't look at me, okay? Three weeks ago, when the writing class met for the first time, I saw you come in. You sat down near me, and you looked over and you smiled. And during that entire class, during that entire class, all I could think about was that I would like... that I wanted you to be... My lover. I want her. I, I, I couldn't even look at you. I, I knew that if I did, you'd know exactly what I was thinking. Willie, I've been married for six years to a man I've known all my life. Our parents knew each other, and he grew up in the house we live in. I knew from the time that I was 15 that someday he and I would live in that house together. It's not that it's been bad. It's just in there. And there isn't enough. You know, I think we've said too much. There's just one more thing. After that class, I swore to myself that I would never look at you or say another word to you. 
what I did. And now, I don't want to be just friends either. Beach, we're going to that nice place in the pier and have some dinner. You want to come? Oh, no. No, honey, not today. I'll miss you, you fink. Annie, go up and rush, buddy. Will you hurry her up? I'll get it. Hello? Yes, he is. Hold on, please. Willie! Dad? Oh. Hello? No, I knew it was. Oh, all right, I'll see you at 7. Willie, I can gonna talk to you. Oh, I have an idea. Once. Buddy, I'm on the phone. Well, Joanne and Audrey are coming over later, and... I said not now. She may be Audrey's aunt, but she's... Buddy, not... how many times do I have to say it? Not now. I think we better go. I'll help. I'll get the door. I'm sorry. Yes, I... Seven o'clock. Yes. Uh, my, my husband's taking the children to his parents' house in Laguna. You haven't changed your mind. A friend of mine said that I could have her apartment. I miss you. I'll see you at seven. I miss you too, Susan. Goodbye. Well, among other things, I think you owe Buddy an apology. Oh, now, wait a second. Buddy doesn't know when to quit. Are you sure you do? I don't really want to talk about it. But... Well, fine. Then you can listen. I assume you've decided to continue your relationship with this woman you talked about? Yes. Well, for the record, then, I absolutely disapprove. <sighs> I can't see how you can put aside your good sense, not to mention your sense of decency, so casually. It's more complicated than that. I haven't finished. Besides finding it personally distasteful, there's something else you should think about. These situations always slop over onto innocent bystanders. In this case, it already has. You acted very badly toward Buddy. All right, then I'll apologize to him. Fine, but don't kid yourself. Not the last apology you'll have to make. Nancy? Over here. Uh, well, your mother's not uh, back from the beach yet, so... Uh... Wow. Careful, careful. Nancy, are you sure that you were... I'm very. Daddy, I don't like it when we fight. Oh, neither do I. That's why I brought you this. What is it? Uh, it's a peace offering. Oh, thank you. I'll pack it very carefully. You might pack it. Why, indeed. <laughs> What's in that bag? Two quarts of milk. Two quarts of milk? They're for Tabby, my friend Beth's cat. Tabby must have some appetite. I've never seen her. Beth's just got her. She said to please be sure and feed her, so it's the least I could do. It's right here. Let's get out of here. I have the first 
Kate get it home? Uh. Nobody's there. Sweet. <laughs> I remember you brought the whole family back one of these when you came back from that uh, our trip to Paris. Oh, I wanted to bring back the whole city, but if you remember, I was in a very limited budget. Quite right, too. I was just out of high school. Hey, no complaints. I mean, I think it was the best present your mother ever gave me. That was not an idea. I mean, you had a fit until your mother and I let you go. 18 years old, traveling alone. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry. I'm not 18 anymore. No, I'm still not sure you should be traveling alone. Oh, Daddy. No, 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 no. Oh, listen, I mean, if you stayed until you graduated, you know, till you uh, passed the bar exam, well, that bar exam is rough. You need help passing it. All I meant was uh, why put more pressure on yourself right now? If I back out now, I feel like I'm giving in. Oh, no, no, that, that's not what it's about. It's about doing things uh, at the right time for the right reasons. It's about uh, being an adult. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Think about it. I'm sorry I blew off at you yesterday. That's okay. Hey, what happened to your face? Uh, I bumped into a door. That's what they all say. I said I bumped into a door, and I did, buddy. You know, you're really a lot of fun lately. Room for one more? Delighted to have you. Where's Timmy? Oh, Jeff picked him up early. Honey, I picked up some cartons for you at the market. I thought you might need a few more. Daddy didn't tell you. Let me guess. You're not moving. Well, I, uh, I decided it might be wiser if I waited till after I took the bar exam. You decided? Well, Daddy and I talked. Uh, what's the matter? Don't you want me to stay? Oh, darling, I want you to do whatever's best for you. I just don't want to add my two cents. As for me, I think you ought to move. Then I get the guest house. And I get your room. We'll see about that one. See about what? About who gets Willie's room and he moves into Nancy's. Your wonderful parents will toss a coin. Oh, well, since Nancy's not leaving until after the bar exam, you got plenty of time to decide. Right, honey? I guess. Yeah, right. Well, that's probably Joanne Turnodger is supposed to play double with me and Annie. It's for Please. me. Sorry. Is there such thing 
is a divorce between a brother and a sister. Because if there is, I'm filing for one. Yes. At this point, I'd be happy to represent...